Please be seated for just one moment. Good morning, everybody, and you're most welcome to St. Bridget's Church, Coraboy, for the celebration of the Mass of the Resurrection for the repose of the soul of Catherine MacDonnell, who is one of the great ladies of our parish here. Just I want to offer uh, the sympathy on behalf to Tomas and the family, on behalf of the parish priest, Father Michael McManus, and his apology for being unable to be here today. So I'll now ask Father Anthony to lead us in the celebration of the Eucharist. Good morning, everyone. And first, I suppose I'd offer my sympathies to St. Bridget's on losing a game that we thought they had won. So we're very sorry about the result. So I'm here today and as uh, anyone who lived to be 98, I think, deserves a celebration. So I think we give uh, to Kathleen a round of applause. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Uh, one of the things she was very proud of was the fact that she was a pioneer. And she established the pioneers, I'm told, in this parish. And the other thing that struck me, in fact, the other day, on the 18th of um, January, I thought myself of it even, that it was the fair day of Ballygare. And, um, and to Kathleen, when she was in England, and she told everyone when it would be the 18th of the month, this is the fair day of Ballygare, and people who never came to Ballygare knew about Ballygare, always knew that the fair day of Ballygare was on the 18th of January, and that was the day that she passed away. So today I'd like to welcome all those who are joining us on the webcam, those who are joining us from overseas, especially all her friends and relatives, and especially a warm welcome to the cousins, the Prices, the Lydens, and the Finnegans in the US, and especially to her sister, Tess Lydon, who's joining us on the webcam today. And also to the former past pupils from uh, Liz Moyle School and from all the schools that she taught in, in her life. So it's a time for a celebration. So we begin then in the name of the Father and of the Son and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. The Lord be with you. So to prepare ourselves to celebrate these sacred mysteries, we pause for a moment now. We call to mind our faults and failings and we ask God's mercy and forgiveness as we celebrate this Eucharist for Kathleen. You are sent to heal the contrite, Lord have mercy. You came to call sinners, Christ to mercy. You are seated at the right hand of the Father to intercede for us, Lord have mercy. May Almighty God have mercy on us, forgive us our sins, and bring us to everlasting life. Let us pray. O God, whose nature is always to forgive and to show mercy, we humbly implore you for your servant Catherine, whom you have called to journey to you, and since she hoped and believed in you, grant that she may be led to our true homeland, to delight in its everlasting joys. Through our Lord Jesus Christ, your Son, who lives and reigns with you in the unity of the Holy Spirit, one God forever and ever. Amen. Now I invite Sean and Parik Feeney, our nephews, to lead us in the readings. A reading from the prophet Isaiah. On this mountain, the Lord of hosts will prepare for all peoples a banquet of rich food. On this mountain, he will remove the morning veil covering all peoples and the shroud enwrapping all nations. He will destroy death forever. The Lord will wipe away the tears from every cheek he will take away his people's shame everywhere on earth, for the Lord has said so. That day it will be said, See, this is our God in whom we hoped for salvation. The Lord is the one in whom we hoped. We exalt and we rejoice.
that he has saved us. The word of the Lord. reading from the first letter of St. Paul to the Thessalonians. We want you to be quite certain, friends, about those who have died, to make sure that you do not grieve about them like the other people who have no hope. We believe, we believe that Jesus died and rose again and that it will be the same for those who have died in Jesus. God will bring them with him. We can tell you this from the Lord's own teaching, that any of us who are left alive under the Lord's coming will not have any advantage over those who have died. At the trumpet of God, the voice of the archangel will call out the command, and the Lord himself will come down from heaven. Those who have died in Christ will be the first to rise, and then those of us who are left alive will be taken up in the clouds, together with them, to meet the Lord in the air. We shall stay with the Lord forever. With such thoughts as these, you should comfort one another. The word of the Lord. The Lord be in your heart and your lips. The Lord be in His holy gospel. The Lord be with you. 
a reading from the Holy Gospel according to John. Jesus said to his disciples, Do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God still and trust in me. There are many rooms in my Father's house. If there were not, I should have told you. I'm going now to prepare a place for you, and after I have gone and prepared you a place, I shall return to take you with me, so that where I am, you may be too. You know the way to the place where I am going. Thomas said, Lord, we do not know where you are going, so how can we know the way? Jesus said, I am the way, the truth, and the life. No one can come to the Father except through me. The Gospel of the Lord. I don't think I'd be giving you too much theology today, but rather a share of a few of the memories of Auntie Kathleen as we celebrate her funeral mass. And I suppose the Corraboy people, we have to, you have to forgive me for calling her Kathleen, uh, but that's how I knew her. Um, and for a long time, I used to think that I was her favorite nephew but I know Mary Theresa and Parik and Sean are a bit jealous of me for that. Um, but at that time, I was the eldest nephew. But then other nephews and nieces came along, and I lost the favour. And I really lost favour when Parik came along and she became his godmother. So I really fell out of favour at that time. But I, when I was about four or five years old, I used to spend the summer holidays with my grandmother, born Cora, near Ballygare. And during that time uh, is where I got to know Auntie Kathleen, I suppose, uh, as a teacher. Um, because I was get, when I was getting a little bigger, she would uh, get me to do the small jobs around. I had to go out to bring the turf and collect the eggs and gather sticks for the fire. And sometimes I would have to accompany her to go weeding down in what was called the Garney, the small garden, down at the old house. And I can still sense the, the smell, the scent of the wild, uh, the, the wild mint. But there she showed me all the plants, and not to mention all the weeds, and the names of them. And I was supposed to remember the names the next day. And uh, she was trying to teach me about all the insects and butterflies and the different insects and plants that were there. So I suppose she was a bit before her time in, she was, in that she was trying to teach me about nature. And from, I saw from the condolence and messages that her pupils in Lismoyle School, they went through the same thing. Uh, she was teaching them also about nature and the importance of nature. But that was something that was above my head and I hadn't the slightest bit of interest in it at the time, I was more interested in trying to play hide-and-seek or hurling or football. But anyway, she had that desire to teach all her life. And when I started school, she knew that I was very fond of telling stories. And I, I'll never forget this story because she gave me a, a typed-out sheet of paper. Now, I was only in... P1, not even P1, what do you call it? Uh, low infants, I'd say, or secondly, high, high infants. But I got this type sheet, anyway, of the story that I haven't forgotten. Uh, it was a story of animals that had become too old. Um, there was a cat that was too old to catch mice, a dog that was too old to gather sheep, a donkey that was too old to pull a cart, and there was a rooster that was too old to do whatever he does with the hens. So anyway, they were being thrown out by their owner, and they were on the side of the road, and eventually they met up. 
and they were asking, they decided what they would do because to make a living. So the cat said he could meow, the dog said he could bark, and the donkey said he could bray, and the rooster said he could crow. So they formed a band and they became famous. But the moral of the story was that you should never give up. In old age, you should always continue doing something useful. And I got a chance, I suppose, to return the favor only a few years ago when I, was enc I encouraged her by my visit never to give up. I got a phone call one evening to say that Kathleen was very low and uh, she was in Bridesmaid Nursing Home at that time. So I debated with myself whether I would come there and then or next morning. But when I thought about it, I said, well, she mightn't be around next morning, so I better go. And so I arrived at the reception, inquired about her, and I was told that, well, uh, she hadn't eaten for two days and wasn't taking much fluids and things didn't look good. So I went into her ward anyway, and I left my hand on her forehead, my freezing hand on her forehead, and she woke up. And she looked around with this mighty smile. And I'll never forget the smile, actually. It was, it was unbelievable to see. And the nurses and carers couldn't believe that she had uh, responded to my treatment. But anyway, uh, we gave her a few sips of tea and uh, a yogurt, and she came back to herself anyway. And after a while, I asked her, would she like to be anointed? And she said she'd love that. And that's what happened, we anointed her, and she was able to respond to all the prayers in no time. She was great like that, because she was delighted, she had great faith, and she was delighted to receive the sacrament of uh, the, the sacrament of the sick. But that was an example of how she also wasn't inclined to give up, even at the very end. Now, when Mary Theresa and I would visit her, she would often bring her the paper or the Ireland's own, and amazingly she could read, still read without spectacles at this stage of her life, right up to the end. So there's lots to celebrate in her life. And I was so delighted to meet several of her past pupils from Lismoyle School there to visit her. Because obviously Kathleen made a big impression on you and taught you many things about life. And I remember she'd often tell me and share with me about the projects she did with you in school. T tell me about the baby chicks and uh, that she'd take into class and the various projects she did with you. And preparing for the kikara, as she would call it, the inspector. So today we celebrate her life and we thank God and especially we thank God for all the people's lives that she infl influenced as a teacher in this mile, but also in other parts of, of Ireland and abroad. But today's readings give us hope. The first reading and the psalm, from the, pro the first reading from the prophet Isaiah and the psalm from uh, Psalm 23, the Lord is my shepherd. It's on your, on your leaflet there, and it, it describes really a welcoming banquet that that Kathleen is experiencing now, enjoying with Khan and her parents and her siblings in the banquet of the kingdom of heaven. Um, and we can imagine the Lord serving her in all those big long tables and serving all of them in, uh, in the celebrating her arrival in heaven. And the psalm reminds me of uh, the, the, the Lord is my shepherd. When I was in Africa, I used to get the odd letter from her and most of them would be spent describing the sheep and cattle. But today, uh, she had always had a great interest in the farming when she retired. But today, we see that she is now seated with the great shepherd himself. But for you, Tomas, today is a sad day, but the second reading and the gospel are meant to be encouragement for you and for those of us left here on the earth. Uh, it tells us we don't need to grieve about those who are left behind because it tells us just as Jesus died and rose again, it will be the same with those who have died. God will bring them to himself. And that's very reassuring. Kathleen had great faith herself 
And so now we need to have no doubt but that she is enjoying the new life of the resurrection right now with the risen Lord. And the gospel is something for our own faith, to boost our own faith. When we hear the gospel, Jesus saying, do not let your hearts be troubled. Trust in God and trust in me. There are many rooms in my father's house. And it goes on, I will prepare a place for you so that where I am, you may be too. So these words are a great comfort to us. And uh, he tells us, I have prepared a place for you so that you may be with me where I am. So Tomas, even though it's hard for you to let go of your mum today, yet if we have faith at all, there is enough in that sentence from the Lord to strengthen us during this time and to help assure us of the res resurrected life that Auntie Kathleen is now enjoying. There are many rooms in my father's house. There's plenty of room for everybody in the kingdom of God. And we can be confident now that she is enjoying that space in her new life. And we've noticed her hard work from the uh, condolence messages as well. And her hard work as a teacher. And now her pupils loved her. But Jesus is saying to her today now, after all that hard work, when you did it to one of these, the least of my brothers and sisters, you did it to me entered now into the kingdom prepared for you since the foundation of the world. And so in, conc in conclusion, Tomas, I just came across this thought or reflection which may be of help to you and to all of us today uh, who are mourning our aunt. When someone you love dies, you never quite get over it. You just slowly learn how to go on without them but always keeping them tucked safely in your heart. When someone you love dies, you never quite get over it. You just slowly learn how to get on without them, but always keeping them tucked safely in your heart. I have no doubt, Thomas, but that you will always want to keep your mum tucked safely in your heart. Amen. And you may please kneel now for our prayers of the faithful. Trusting in God, we ask his mercy now for Catherine as we entrust her into his loving embrace. <clears throat> we pray for Catherine. May God receive her kindly and generously and forgiveness and reward and the rewards of her faith. May she continue to inspire us, to pray for us, and to be there at the end to welcome us in our turn into eternal life. Lord, hear us. We remember all who cared for Catherine in recent years, particularly the staff of Sonnet's Nursing Home and Brideswell Nursing Home, and all support the Uncle Hospital. Lord, hear us. And we remember all the deceased members of the MacDonald and Feely families, especially Catherine's late husband, Con, her parents, John and Anne Feeney, her sisters, Mary, Ellie, Bridget, Bernadette and Agnes, as well as her late brothers, John Joe, Paddy and Tommy. May they enjoy the peace of God's kingdom. Lord, hear us. And we pray for all who are grieving today for the loss of Catherine. We are mindful especially of her son, Tomas, her sister, Tess Leiden in New York, and all her nieces and nephews, friends and relatives and neighbors. May they be sustained by the knowledge that even when we die, life is changed, not ended, and death brings us to eternal life. Lord, hear us. Christ is the Prince of Peace. We pray that violence may cease in those parts of the world where there is war, particularly in the Ukraine and in Gaza at this time. Lord, hear us. And we pray in silence for any special intention we might like to bring to this Mass. Heavenly God, creator of heaven and earth, hear the prayers we offer you today on behalf of Catherine, 
reward her goodness, forgive her faults, and welcome her into eternal rest, where you live and reign forever and ever. I invite Parik, our godchild, and Tomas to bring up the gifts for today's Mass. Pick up the gift. Let us pray that my sacrifice and yours may be acceptable to God, our Almighty Father. Be near, O Lord, we pray to your servant Catherine, on whose funeral day we offer you this sacrifice of conciliation, so that should any stain of sin have clung to her, or any human fault have affected her, it may, by your loving gift, be forgiven and wiped away, through Christ our Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is truly right and just, our duty and our salvation, always and everywhere to give you thanks, Lord, Holy Father, Almighty and Eternal God, through Jesus Christ our Lord. For he is the salvation of the world, the life of the human race, the resurrection of the dead. Through him, the host of angels adores your majesty and rejoices in your presence forever. May our voices, we pray, join with theirs in one chorus of exultant praise as we sing. Indeed, holy, O Lord, and all you have created rightly gives you praise. For through your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, by the power and working of the Holy Spirit, you give life to all things and make them holy. And you never cease to gather a people to yourself, so that from the rising of the sun to its setting, a pure sacrifice may be offered to your name. Therefore, O Lord, we humbly implore you by the same Spirit, Graciously make holy these gifts we have brought to you for consecration, that they may become the body and blood of your Son, our Lord Jesus Christ, at whose command we celebrate these mysteries. For on the night he was betrayed, he himself took bread, and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, broke the bread, and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take this, all of you, and eat of it, for this is my body, which will be given up for you. In a similar way, when supper was ended, he took the chalice and giving you thanks, he said the blessing, gave the chalice to his disciples saying, 
Take this, all of you, and drink from it, for this is the chalice of my blood, the blood of the new and eternal covenant, which will be poured out for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this in memory of me. And we proclaim in song the mystery of faith. As we celebrate the memorial of the saving passion of your Son, his wondrous resurrection and ascension into heaven, and as we look forward to his second coming, we offer you in thanksgiving this holy and living sacrifice. Look, we pray upon the oblation of your church and recognizing the sacrificial victim by whose death you will to reconcile us to yourself. Grant that we, who are nourished by the body and blood of your Son and filled with his Holy Spirit, may become one body, one spirit in Christ. May he make of us an eternal offering to you so that we may obtain an inheritance with your elect, especially with the most blessed Virgin Mary, Mother of God, with St. Joseph, her spouse, with your blessed apostles and glorious martyrs, with St. Bridget and all the saints on whose constant intercession in your presence we rely for unfailing help. May this sacrifice of our reconciliation, we pray, O Lord, advance the peace and salvation of all the world. Be pleased to confirm in faith and charity your pilgrim church on earth, which your servant, Francis our Pope, and our bishop and all the order of bishops and all the clergy, religious, and all God's people. Listen graciously to the prayers of this family whom you have summoned before you. In your compassion, O merciful Father, gather to yourself all your children scattered throughout the world. Remember your servant, Catherine, whom you have called from this world to yourself. Grant that she who was united with your son in a death like his may also be one with him in his resurrection. When from the earth he will raise up in the flesh those who have died and transform our lowly body after the pattern of his own glorious body. To all our departed brothers and sisters too, and to all who are pleasing to you at their passing from this life, give kind admittance to your kingdom. There we hope to enjoy forever the fullness of your glory when you will wipe away every tear from our eyes, for seeing you, our God, as you are, we shall be like you for all the ages and praise you without end. Through Christ our Lord, through whom you bestow on the world all that is good. Through him and with him and in him, O God, Almighty Father, in the unity of the Holy Spirit, all glory and honor is yours forever and ever. Amen. Sing an amen. Augustinish Guimish Hunanahar, we Maravu and Arslani Hordunianov, or Nahar, Tanya, Nevitan, Kodagadri, Nenta, the Hedder and Tano, Nick Peter, Turdun and you, August Matu and Arvik, Major Darwin, Hain, Snalikshnaga, Oxyational. Deliver us, Lord, we pray from every evil, graciously grant peace in our days that by the help of your mercy, we may be always free from sin and safe from all distress as we await the blessed hope and the coming of our Savior, Jesus Christ. 
And today we pray for peace, peace in Gaza and peace in Ukraine, as we say, Lord Jesus Christ, you say to your apostles, peace I leave you, my peace I give you. Look not on our sins and the faith of your church and graciously grant her peace and unity in accordance with your will, who live and reign forever and ever. Amen. May the peace of the risen Lord be with you always. So we pause for a moment and play, pray in silence for peace throughout the world. Lamb of God, take away the sins of the world and the sins. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world and the sins. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace. Lord Jesus Christ, send the Lord God, and 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 the Behold the Lamb of God, behold him who takes away the sin of the world. Blessed are we who are called to the supper of the Lamb. Lord, I am not worthy that you should enter under my roof. When I say the word, and my soul shall be. May the body and blood of Christ bring us to everlasting life.
<clears throat> o sacrament most holy, O sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. We await a Savior, the Lord Jesus Christ, who will change our mortal bodies to conform with his own glorified body. O sacrament most holy, sacrament divine, all praise and all thanksgiving be every moment thine. In our closing prayer, grant we pray, Almighty God, that your servant Catherine, who today has journeyed from this world, may by this sacrifice be cleansed and freed from sin and so receive the everlasting joys of the resurrection through Christ our Lord. Before we sing, before we do our final commemoration prayers at the end, I'd like to thank Willie for all his help over the last dear few days. And so on the last page of your leaflet there, you will find some of the closing prayers for the commemoration. For that, I'd like to call on Tomas, who'd like to close with a short prayer. <clears throat> Thanks for reminding me. Under the circumstances we find ourselves here today, to be inappropriate just to walk away, leave this house. Just a short question. Thank you, especially for the Come on, we're going to say Mass and uh, give a homily that Mother deserved. Um, and thank Deacon Willie Gackman, good friend and neighbour, to help him out and guide it through the whole thing because uh, <clears throat> regardless of what our political classes say, we're not a secular society. It's a Catholic country and it has been for over a thousand years. So thank you very much. I'd also like to thank the choir who have done a great job uh, in their choice selection and professional delivery. Um, I'd also like to thank, and they know who they are, the grave diggers who helped me that morning hack their way through the ice so that we could open a grave. And um, I'd also like to thank uh, Porik Feeney there for linking up with Mr. Carter here so that to make this available to uh, friends and relatives overseas in the United States and in England who can't be here with us today. Um, there's a good few others, of course, that I should be thanking because they came from far and wide. I didn't think that there'd be uh, a turnout like this for somebody who's been gone out of circulation for so long, but thank you all very much for coming. Some even made it from France, believe it or not, in spite of weather conditions. Last, but by no means least, uh, I have to thank the management team on the sideline, Enda and Ethan McHugh, because they took me in that first day and they fed me and gave me a big mug of strong tea. And they set up a checklist and a framework document to coordinate and guide proceedings through and prevent the whole thing from unravelling and falling into chaos, which you would have, because my head wasn't in the right place at all. I'll finish on that note, and I'll finish with a prayer that I learned from my cousin, the legendary Patrick Lydon of NYPD fame. <coughs> St. Michael the Archangel, defend us in the hour of battle. Protect us against the wickedness and snares of the devil. May God rebuke him, we humbly pray. O Prince of the heavenly host, 
Trust into hell, Satan, and all the evil spirits who wander the earth for the ruin of souls. And should I fall in mortal combat, St. Michael, with your shield, protect my soul from the devil, and with your grace, enrich my soul, and make it presentable to God, the Most High, at the hour of our death. Amen. Spirit and evil men. Thank you. So you'll find some of the prayers on the back of your leaflet. Before we go our separate ways, let us take leave of Catherine. May our farewell express our affection for her. May it ease our sadness and strengthen our hope. One day we shall joyfully greet her again when the love of Christ, which conquers all things, destroys even death itself. And now the coffin will be Sprinkled with holy water and blessed with incense, the sprinkling of the holy water reminds us of our baptism, and the incense reminds us that our prayer goes up to God, our Heavenly Father. And while that is being done, the choir will be singing this uh, next psalm. The response is, receive her soul and present her to God the Most High. Saints of God, come to her aid. Hasten to meet her, angels of the Lord. May Christ, who called you, take you to himself. May the angels lead you to the bosom of Abraham. Eternal rest grant unto her, O Lord, and let perpetual light shine upon her. Receive her soul, present her to God the Most High. Into your hands, Father, mercies, we commend Catherine in the sure and certain hope that together with all who have died in Christ, she will rise with him on the last day. We give you thanks for the blessings which you bestowed on Catherine in her long life. They are signs to us of your goodness and of our fellowship with the saints in Christ. Merciful Lord, Turn towards us and listen to our prayers. Open the gates of paradise to your servant and help us to remain, those of us who remain, to comfort one another with assurances of faith until we all meet in Christ when we are with you and with our sister forever. May the choirs of angels welcome you and lead you to the bosom of Abraham where Lazarus is poor no longer. May Catherine, may you find eternal rest. And in peace now, let us take Catherine to her place, her final rest. <laughs> 